Hey guys, and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that I get asked about a lot, especially when people watch my Should I Buy a Sailrite Fabricator video. <laughs> Do you still love your machine? So, I thought we would talk about it. I have my domestic and my baby, my baby here. And we're going to be talking about both of them. Um, so, let's get started. Alright, the very first thing I remember about getting my fabricator was that it came in four different boxes. At the time, it was a great thing because my sewing room is upstairs. So if I had gotten one of the in other industrials that were kind of built into their desk, it would have been really difficult for me to be able to get it upstairs. And my husband probably would have killed me. <laughs> so, I'm really glad that it came the way that it did. The next thing, I had a really hard time putting it together. The time that I got my sale right, the time I got my fabricator, they, there weren't any current videos on how to put one together and I wished I had made one, but it's okay. They have since made videos on the newer desks so that you guys can put them together without any problem. The very first problem that I had was tension. And I see this a lot. If you're not a part of the fabricator uh, Facebook group page, you should probably join it, especially if you're thinking about getting a fabricator or you've got one and maybe you've started having issues or whatever, make sure that you join that page because there are a lot of knowledgeable people on there that have had their fabricators for a while and that could kind of help you out if you have any issues. But one of the things that I've seen a lot is tension. And so I think a lot of people get an industrial and they think, well, it's like a domestic. I can just use all of the Gooderman thread that I already have and I'll be good to go. <laughs> That's a big fat no. <laughs> Um, from what I've found and in my experience is two things. One, the tension gets really messed up with this thread because the fabricator is, um, it's an industrial guys. It's not a measly domestic. It, it's made to work and to work hard. So I would definitely say if you're going to get a fabricator, you need to get another kind of thread and I'll tell you what kind in a minute. So if you look at your thread really, really closely and you pull it out, there are these teeny, teeny, tiny little fibers um, all kind of connected with your thread. All of that stuff is going to get into your sewing machine. You know when you clean out your sewing machine and you're just like, where did all of this junk come from? Partially that's from your fabric, especially cotton if you're doing any kind of, um, you know, fleas or stuff like that. A lot of that fuzz that's in there is some of the fabric and stuff, but some of it is this stuff because it really just, I noticed sewing with it, after not sewing with it for a while, I could see the kind of like dust fibers kind of going all over the place. Um, so don't use this. I've had one person tell me that they use Guterman on their fabricator. And if it works for you, good. I noticed for me that it's not good for my machine. I pay way too much money for this machine <laughs> to put crap thread in it. So generally, I wouldn't use Gooderman's. And there's nothing wrong with Gooderman's. I use it, I still have all of my thread on my walls for my domestic that I use it for, but I will not use it on my industrial. Um, but the thread that I will use on my industrial is from Sunny Sewing Machines. Um, none of this video is sponsored, by the way. I just want to let you guys know. Um, Sunny Sewing Machines has some really nice thread. There's not a bunch of fuzzy mess all over it. And that's because the thread is bonded nylon or bonded poly. Um, you can get either or. Um, there is a difference though because on the ends of the thread you have to burn it now whereas with your regular thread you don't have to do that. But this will not leave a bunch of junk and gunk all over your machine. You're still going to have a little bit from all of your fabric and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part when I clean out my machine it is nothing like my domestic. <laughs> It is nothing. There's a night and day difference because I, I believe it's because of the thread that I use. Now I also get, um, so that was Tech 70. I also get my thread from Wizardry Stitchery. Um, they have and carry this rainbow thread and there's also like a pastel. Those are the ones that I get from them because they're really pretty. <laughs> and everybody has to have rainbow thread. I mean, come on. Anyway, same difference. Um, 
I think it's text 80, I want to say. I could be wrong. But I believe there's this text 80. Now, I will say, when I put the Wizardry Stitchery um, thread on my machine, my tension kind of has to be changed a little bit because it's a heavier text or it's um, a larger text. But I... <sighs> hate. <laughs> I hate messing with the tension on my machine. Um, you really should learn your machine and learn the tension on your machine, but nine times out of ten, I'm in a hurry trying to get things done because she rushes and rushes and life's no fun. <laughs> anyway, I use this very rarely. That's probably why I've got so much of it. Now, there is a sticker shock value when you go to buy your thread. This is $13.99 versus your, like, what, $4.99? It's probably gone up from now. Um, However, there's a big difference. When you're paying more, you're getting more. Most of you guys know that I sew on a daily basis. I make patterns, I make mock-ups, I make bags to sell. I sew on a daily basis. <laughs> Sunday is like my only day off. So this is what the cone starts out looking like. This is probably about eight months, maybe, and I use black a lot. So it lasts me so much longer. Um, using this thread and it and it did cost me a little bit more however I feel I feel like I got my money's worth so um, generally and I suggest this in my other video I would normally buy two of each why because you've got two cones here you've got one for your bottom and then you've got one for your actual machine um, I kept having to switch one to make a bobbin and then switch it back to make you know to be able to sew and it was incredibly incredibly frustrating so I started buying two of each color and that way I always I don't have to move it back and forth and it gets expensive however I do this for a business so I'm gonna let it go let's talk about oiling your machine I made a video about how you can oil your fabricator how often did I oil my domestic <laughs> Whenever I took her in because I was having a problem, she got oiled. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, but because of my uh, industrial costing so much, I take a little bit better care of her. <laughs> um, so if you're a little bit nervous about oiling machines and want to know when to do it and how to do it, check out that video. But uh, generally, because I work so much, it's like every other day. And needles and that needles and all of that is a whole nother video but she's pretty easy maintenance wise um, cleaning her out and everything there's not a whole lot of dust and dirt because I'm using a better thread now um, so she's really easy to clean out it's a lot easier than this because you got this teeny tiny little hole that you got to clean do I still love her I still love her because I still use her from time to time getting to the nitty-gritty do I still love my fabricator let me show you this past week, I had to make um, a pattern for a video that you guys will see. Um, it should be out before this video, but um, I had to make a pattern, and I have so many people that ask in the K&A Custom Fabrics um, Facebook page, are your patterns that you make domestic friendly? So I grabbed out my domestic, and I started putting this bag together. It's one of our newer patterns. Uh, we have a Mario one, and, and then the Pokemon one, and then hopefully at some point we'll make a Minecraft one. Um, but we sell these patterns um, with the material all printed and everything, and so that way they look really cool. However, I've had so many people ask me, are they domestic friendly? After making this recent video, I have to say it depends. It depends on what kind of domestic that you have. Um, I started making mine on the domestic and I started having a lot of problems and it didn't look quite as clean and quite as nice so that I stopped sewing on my domestic and I went to the fabricator because I wanted it to look nice. And when I started sewing on the fabricator, that's when it started looking a lot nicer. So, um, for thicker, thicker size when you've got like a D ring in the side and you have to connect, you know, your zipper gusset and your bottom gusset and you have to top stitch over all of this, it looks a lot nicer with the fabricator. Um, so that right there kind of reminded me and convinced me that, yeah, I still love my fabricator because she's going to get through all of these layers and she's going to make my project look really, really nice. So would I recommend her? Heck yes. <laughs> if you're going to be doing thick purses, thick book bags, um, generally 
the fabricator came out to kind of like do boat awnings and cushions and you know stuff like that and the bag community has really picked up this machine because of all of the stuff that she can do so if you haven't gotten one yet if you go there and you decide to buy one make sure that you tell them face sent you because at some point I would like to get a sponsored video <laughs> I know it's terrible. Anyway, at some point, you know, because they've probably sold a lot. I keep seeing, like, the commercials on uh, YouTube, and I'm like, you paid for that because I, I sold a sewing machine for you. <laughs> I like to think so. I, uh, I, I'm just messing around, guys. They, the machine speaks for itself. It doesn't need me to make a video about it. The machine speaks for itself. If you sit down and you sew on it, if you check out, you know, some of those sale rank videos, the machine really does speak for itself. Uh, they do have other machines as well. At some point, I would like to get another um, kind of tabletop machine and just kind of give it a go because I know she's so good. I would like to have something that I can kind of carry downstairs um, when I want to sew downstairs. But for now, I got my baby and I love her. <laughs> All right, guys, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Or if you want to subscribe and see some of my other fabricator videos, I have a bunch of them and I have a couple coming up. And I didn't mention it, but I did go and get myself a nifty little shirt um, just for this video because I thought it would be fun for you guys to see how much I love my fabricator because she's such a great machine. Anyway, if you want to see any more of those videos, make sure that you subscribe. If you're watching and not subscribing, you are one of those 80% of people that are not subscribed to the channel. It really, really helps me out when you guys subscribe, um, especially if you're going to continue watching the videos. Please do me a favor and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, something I didn't cover in the video, um, just leave them in the comment section down below. I do check those daily. And thanks again for joining us on FaithWorks Designs. Bye, guys.